here. All right. <clears throat> Got to clear my throat. Ladies and gentlemen, in the background is boys to men. And out of all the groups out there that could uh, put together such a song, boys to men, ladies and gentlemen. And they're talking about just my imagination. Ladies and gentlemen, I am grateful that we've had an opportunity to talk over the last couple of weeks and months. I'll say it again because I don't think it was as clear as it possibly could have been. I am patching a software. You're patching? Yes, I don't have a needle and thread, but the software will let me do what I need to do. Okay? So I'm going to do that in the background while I talk to you guys. I just don't know if this is recording. And see, that's the thing. So let's right click on it. Let's do that. And it is recording. Because I don't see the timer, that's the problem. So that, I apologize. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a couple of things to talk about. I've talked to a couple of people over the past couple of years. Well, actually, quite a few people, not just a couple. And they call me up. But most of them usually are calling me up because, and we're not talking about the people who are calling and asking for some type of help in one fashion form or another, or the people who are asking to join whatever group that I'm supposed to be a part of. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not part of a group. SACCOM is not a think tank. We don't sit up here and talk about remedies at SACCOM. We talked all night tonight about you all and about your SAT packs and completing the SAT packs and completing the Q packs and completing the Omega packs and the Prime packs. We talked about how we're getting ready to assign other numbers to the previous SAT packers who didn't do what they were supposed to and how we're getting ready to do the power of attorney for those individuals so that we can help them perfect the process that they did not complete on their own. What we tried to explain to people, and most of them simply didn't understand, let me get rid of this window here, I apologize. That one should have went away a long time ago, and so should all of these. The reason why all of that's popping up is because I'm downloading something, and that's a, it's messing with the video overlay. Plus, I got WebRoot, WebRoot, WebRoot. This is WebRoot, ladies and gentlemen. It is an antivirus, okay? I like WebRoot. I've liked WebRoot for a while, but WebRoot always caused problems when you cracked it. Oh, I cracked it a long time ago. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, in the past several months, weeks, years, decades, that's right, decades, people have always felt the need to prove to me that they were smarter than I was or on my level or had the very same idea. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not competing with none of you. First, none of you are on my level because I don't even know what my level is. So why would people want to challenge what I know? I don't understand it. Like I said, don't challenge what I'm saying. Prove me wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, if I am wrong, prove me wrong. But if I am not wrong, Go with it. Take the information, apply it to what you already know, and increase your knowledge, increase your understanding. Now, look, I didn't actually call to talk about that. I did want to talk about something. I did a video the other day, and I decided not to put it up. There was a young lady who contacted me. Uh, access denied. What the flying fart? Yeah, you better believe I want to gain access to my file. Uh-uh, you're going to try that again. What you mean you can't ac access the file? It's WebRoot, y'all. I got to shut down WebRoot for a minute. So, y'all, uh, WebRoot saying, you ain't getting access to that file. And I'm like, WebRoot, you're going to leave me alone. So, you better get out of my way for a moment, WebRoot. Yeah, I'm going to shut you down. Lord have mercy. 
taking over my screen. Uh-oh, it ain't going to let me do it, y'all. I know it's wet, brute. It ain't going to let me do it, y'all. Oh, no, it's not wet, brute. Oh, I done messed up, y'all. Y'all just got to excuse me for one second. I'll be right back, and then we're going to turn off the music because I got something else I want to talk to y'all about, okay? Be right back. Okay, what was happening is that the software was running in the background. That's what the problem was. It wasn't web root. It was my root. Oh, you are just so rooty. Okay. Um, yeah, it's not going to let me do it. Dag nabbit. See, it's not going to let me do it. So it's telling me the file is still in use, so we're going to put the name. Come on now. So I can get on with this video. I don't usually set up programs. Says nothing patched error done. Okay, so we're gonna do that one more again, see if that will work it because it's not working in here, it's, it's off, it ain't there. And so we're gonna do it one more again, let it get up on in there. Come on now, I ain't got all day, ladies and gentlemen. There were a couple of things that I want to talk about, but. I figured if I'm sharing information so freely, and I am sharing information freely, nobody is paying me a dime for this. Over, over 300 videos since May, 300 videos since March, I'm sorry, not May, since March. Ladies and gentlemen, 300 videos since March. Lord have mercy. Because I made a promise to you all, and when I made that promise, I intended on keeping my word, because as I tell you, that's what I do. I keep my word, or I do the best I can to keep my word. As I had to tell people tonight at our meeting, I tell you all the same thing. If I say I keep my word, that's not for you all to judge me by. I'm not saying that so you could have something to judge me by. I'm saying that because that's for me to judge me by. That's why I said I keep I solo, I selfish, I keep my word. I'm a selfish person. I know what the problem is. Get out of here. Get out of here. I know what the problem is. Sorry to be going through all this. I know what the problem is. Dag nabbit, get out of here. Ladies and gentlemen, the problem is I didn't do it the right way. And that's because I am tired. I am tired of all of this stupidity. Tired of these judges and these other trustees acting like they got some power. Everybody wants to say people hate the government. No, we don't hate the government because the government was not run this way. That's where you hear people talking about de jure, non de jure governments. Government is a public trust. That's government. Government has no authority over a beneficiary. None. There is no law on this planet that allows a beneficiary to be ruled by a trustee. Go ahead and find me one single trust that allows a trustee to rule over a beneficiary. Ladies and gentlemen, I know they created this stupid idea that a beneficiary can be a trustee. No, a beneficiary can never be a trustee. You see, they, they went ahead and tampered with trust law. Trust law is a common law thing. It is not a statutory thing. Oh, well, they made a statute about trust. That's right. They made a statute, but trust law existed prior to statute. Just like arbitration existed prior to statute, which is why they hate the fact they can't control it. And they can't. It's out of their control. See what I tell you. I just made a mistake, y'all. So we just gonna put the double E. E E E E E E E. Okay. And now it's gonna tell me patch. See? Okay. And then file and patched and executed and patched and finished so I can go on about my business. So I can finish this video. So, ladies and gentlemen. With all of the stupidity of our world and all the stupidity of this system and all of the stupidity of what's going on, 
let me explain something, and we're going to talk about the Illuminati and the Freemasons for a moment. Now, I'm not going to go all in depth that people have, because you guys have already heard all the stories about the Freemasons and Illuminati. You already know about the stupidity of those things. Ladies and gentlemen, the Illuminati and the Freemasons are there to distract you. The Illuminati controls the industry, entertainment, and all of the junk that goes with that. You guys know about this already. Okay? You guys already know about the junk that they do. The Masons and the Illuminati. You know about what they've done to the music industry. The first thing they did was they originally would not allow people of color to make music. Yeah, that was that group, ladies and gentlemen, Illuminati and Freemasons. They're the ones who would not allow people of color to make music. You don't remember? That's why they had all of the underground clubs. Remember that. Go back and take a look. They had to have underground clubs. They couldn't have their own dance clubs. They couldn't play their own music. As a matter of fact, when the so-called slaves because that's what they were, were brought here to America. They couldn't do their own songs. They couldn't do their own music. All that stuff you're hearing about people saying it on plantation, do you not understand how many times they were beaten for doing that? You don't understand how many times people were shot and killed for singing? Singing. So, they started saying, okay, we're going to let you sing, dance, play an instrument, and even we're going to eventually let you play in sports. But that's all you're going to do. You ain't going to do nothing else. Working in a factory, you ain't working in nobody's factory. Singing, dancing, and playing somebody's sports in the future, that's what you're going to do. And if you want to do some comedy, you're going to do it amongst yourselves at first. I had a friend, he was a, I, I called him a half-breed. Uh, he was, he was a very good friend. And Will was his name. And Will made the comment that the saying is, black people are good for nothing but taking out the trash. And when he said that, I was in, he was in the 10th grade, I was in the 12th grade. Or was I, no, I was one grade ahead of him. So he was in the 10th grade, I was in the 11th grade. And Will said that, and I looked at him and I said, what? And he says, really, that's what they say. And I did hear somebody eventually say that in a stupid movie. And I realized, pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. I realized that society hasn't changed. They keep trying to tell us it's changed. Oh, you remember George Floyd? Yeah, and they're not even talking about him no more, right? No more Black Lives Matter. No more marches. No, that done died out, hasn't it? Because that's what they do. Everybody moves on. Nothing changes. Biden's in office, but nothing has changed. Obama was in office. Now, the only problem with Obama, and I, I feel sorry for that idiot, I mean, Obama. Like I said, as a person, I think he's all right. But as a politician, that man is as crooked as they come. But Obama could not change anything for people of color. What do you mean? Well, because the moment he would have, they would have said he was doing it for racial reasons. What the flying? That's correct. And then it would have been a stigma on it from that point on. Then you would have had somebody like Donald Trump coming in and undoing it. Because that's what Donald Trump was doing, is trying to undo everything Obama did. Now, if you don't think Donald Trump is a racist, I don't care if him and Kanye West kick it with each other. If you don't think he's a racist, you better go back and rewatch it. Better go back and repay attention to him. I don't care if you have an opinion of this, okay? I don't care if you have an opinion of this. I don't care if he has a couple of people who are of a color and they're his friends. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know who the, <laughs> the most surprising races on this planet are? Black people, people of color. They'll talk about a white person in a split second. A white person. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no such thing as a white person. The white people will talk about a black person in a split. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no such thing as a black person. They don't exist. We created race. Race didn't exist at the beginning. 
Race did not exist at the very beginning. That's what I wanted to talk to you guys about anyway. No, not race, but the beginning. Okay? In the beginning. That's what I want to talk to you about. There's a couple of things I want to show you. Now, this is Genesis, the sixth chapter. Now, this is Noah. And what most people don't know, oh, it's impossible for them to live 500 years. We got people who live 120 years in our day. So if they can live 120 years now, Moses lived to be 120 years old, and that was several hundred years before this, at least 500 years before this occurred. Pay attention, because you need to understand. They were closer to Adam. As a matter of fact, when he was born, Adam was still alive. On his way dying, but he was still alive. And he was several great grandfathers of Noah. What I want to talk to you about is the Shem, Ham, and Jetheth. And the reason why I want to talk to you about these three, Shem, this is the Asian race, or what people refer to as yellow people. There's no such thing as a yellow person. Morons, stop applying a color to people. Ham, this is where the people of so called color come from. And Jetheth, this is where the individuals of what they want to refer to as Aryan or European descent, this is where they come from. Now, why is that? Because after the flood, these were the three that populated the earth. Noah didn't have any more children. But we've got something we need to talk about. Because I want to show you what the Illuminati and the Freemasons are propagating in these days. We're not going to have a long discussion because i got to talk to you guys about the credits. So uh, I can't tell you what time it is. I know on my clock it's 9.09, but I can't see the clock. And like I said, it is more than likely because of this software installing that I can't see the clock. So I apologize, okay? But it says, when men, I want you to pay attention to this word right here. This is very important, okay? started to grow in number. There were only a few people at this point because like I said, several generations passed out them. These individuals weren't having children until they were hundreds of years old. Go back and look at the fourth chapter of Genesis and the fifth chapter. You will see that individuals weren't having children until they were hundreds of years old. So when men started to grow in number on the surface of the ground and daughters were born to them, who? The men, pay attention to this, the sons of the true God, wait a minute, <laughs> are these men the same as these sons? No. Why? Because they're two different groups. Why? Because it says men started to grow and they were born to them, these men. It says the sons of the true God began to notice the daughters of men. So this lets us know that these sons and these men are different. The sons of the true God begin to notice the daughters of men. Why would the men be noticing their own daughters when it says that men started to grow a number on the surface of the ground, showing earth, and daughters were born to them, and then these sons, a different group, no, they weren't living on another part of the earth, why? Because this says on the surface of the ground. It says they began to notice. They began to notice means that they weren't around them. This was an observance. So who were these sons of the true God? Well, the sons of the true God is a Hebrew idiom. And it usually is in reference to angelic sons of God. You don't believe me? Go ahead and look at when it says Adam, son of God. Yes, humans are considered sons of God, but so are the angels. So it says they begin to notice the daughters of men, that they were beautiful. Now notice here, it's different. So they began taking wives, all of whom they chose. It says all of whom they chose. Wait a minute. Hold on. It says they begin taking wives. Lord have mercy. Wait a minute. Hold on. 
So they began taking wives. Then it says, all of whom they chose. Now, why does it say all of whom they chose? Why didn't it just say they began taking wives? And just stop there. But they went further. This is Moses who wrote this, by the way. But this is by inspiration. It says, all of whom they chose. And so God said, Jehovah said, my spirit will not tolerate man indefinitely because he is only flesh. Accordingly, his days will amount to 120 years. Ladies and gentlemen, this was not the limit as to the life of man. Now, figuratively, yes, but literally, no. It was 120 years from the date of him saying this that he put a demarcation on the lifespan of that generation. Remember, Noah was 500 years old. So the Nephilim were on the earth in those days and afterwards. During that time, the sons of the true God continued to have relations with the daughters of men. And they bore sons to them. These were the mighty ones of old, the men of fame. Zeus, Hercules, Hermes, Archelaus. These is where all of those Grecian gods come from. Because these hybrids, or sons of the sons of God, or the sons of these gods, this is your Greek mythology. Don't take my word for it. Go back, take a look. It all comes from this. We got so much to talk about, but we're not going to cover everything because it's not my job. Let me show you verse number nine. This is the history of Noah. Noah was a righteous man and he proved faultless among his contemporaries. Noah walked with the true God. We need to know one thing about Noah. Do you guys know what we need to know about Noah? Let's see if I can pull that scripture real quick so I can move on to the next point because it's important. Where's your age at, Noah? Ah, there it is. Noah was 600 years old when the floods came up on the earth. Remember, he was 500 years old just before the sons of the true God began noticing the daughters of women. So please understand, 120 years is what they had. The 600 years old Yes, the 500 years old estimates. But pay attention. What is important is not the fact that everything was destroyed. Everybody thinks the Nephilim survived. The Nephilim did not survive. Everything was destroyed. All the people were destroyed. All of the children of the angelic creatures were destroyed. Yes, all they did was materialize in bodies, the same as you hear Jesus materialized in a human body and said, Here are. Mr. Thomas, since you're so doubting me, put your hands on my side. Go right ahead. You know, materialized in human bodies. And thus they bore sons. These were hybrids. And yeah, there were some flaws to these individuals. There's a whole lot going on. If only you knew why they were digging in the Arctic. Why they are digging. You guys don't even understand why they're trying to use the DNA of a woolly mammoth. They, it's not that they just started doing that now. They've been trying to do that ever since they discovered the woolly mammoth. Frozen. To prove this to you, why do you think they still have it frozen? Talking about how they want to create other woolly mammoths. For what reason? All right, the next point we want to go is to chapter 9. This was chapter 7, that's chapter 8. And here we go. Chapter 9. I went too far. Ladies and gentlemen, the scriptures say that Noah started off as a farmer and he planted a vineyard. And you know what he did? He drank some of his own nectar. It says he drank the wine and he became intoxicated. He was a drunk. Sorry. That's what he was. Why? Because his wife is not here, people. His wife is nowhere mentioned. This is several years. This is not immediately after the flood. It says he started off as a farmer. First, they had to find the land. 
Okay, but it says he started off with a farmer, he got intoxicated, and he uncovered himself inside his tent. His wife is not mentioned. Now notice, Ham, the father of Canaan, saw his father's nakedness, and he told it to his two brothers outside. So Shem and Jaseth took a garment, put it up on both their shoulders, and walked in backwards because they respected their father. Thus, they covered their father's nakedness. Ladies and gentlemen, when you see the scriptures refer to someone's nakedness or uncovering someone's nakedness, it involves sex. So when it says, you'll see in a second, okay, when it says they uncovered and saw his father's nakedness, this is implying something more than just looking at somebody with no clothes on. While their faces were turned away, they did not see their father's nakedness. When Noah woke from his wine, he learned, because somebody told him, what his youngest son had done to him. And he said, curse be Canaan. Wait a minute. Let him become the lowest slave of his brothers. He said, curse be Canaan, but pay attention. It says, Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness, his father's nakedness. Wait, did Ham see it or was it Canaan? Ladies and gentlemen, we find out that it was Canaan who did what he did. Okay, Canaan, the land of Canaan, the Canaanites, which is, anybody? Africa, the southern portions, the mid-southern portions. It is Africa that is the land of Canaan. That's where it comes from. It says, let him be the lowest slave of his brothers. Ladies and gentlemen, to prove that it was Canaan, he says again, let Canaan become a slave to him, Shem. Again, who was Shem? Shem was the one for whom the... Or is it the other way around? Oh, I'm sorry. I had it backwards. The Asian race came from Jephthah. And Shem, <laughs> I don't know how I could have missed that up, because Abraham is a descendant of Shem. So Shem is where the Caucasian and Arab and so forth races come from. All right. I apologize. I got that backwards. Now, notice what he says about Canaan again says, let him reside in the tents of Shem, and let Canaan become a slave to him also. So the fact that certain groups of people are more prominent than others, it was already written some time ago before it ever happened. Not saying that this was intentional, not saying that this was purposeful. Notice this, Noah continued to live 350 years after the flood. So all the days that of Noah amounted to 950 years and he died. He did not live a full day. A day to God is a, as a thousand years. He did not live a full day. Adam did not live a full day at 930 years. Methuselah did not live a full day at 960. Was he 69? Did not live a full day. Okay. Now I need to show you something. Canaan. Let's find out what happens with Canaan. You guys don't mind? Then it's going to be kind of quick. We're not going to go too far. We, as a matter of fact, you need to understand Cush is the son of Canaan. Okay? So we're going to go right here where we see, says, the sons of Ham were Cush. Oh, I said Cush was the son of Canaan. I apologize. Sons of Ham were Cush, Mizrim, 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 sorry. Don't know how I can pronounce that name wrong. I had to close my eyes to pronounce it right. Put and Canaan. The sons of Cush was Sheba. Havala. Saba. Or Sapta, excuse me. Rema and Saptika. Now, we're only concerned about right here. Cush becomes father to Nimrod. Cush or Cushites, there were two Cushites in Africa. 
One was in Median. They were called Cushites, the land of Media. They were not. They were not the Cushites of this Cush. They were not of Cush. The Medianites were from Shem. They were called Cushites. Moses' wife, Zephora, was a Cushite. She was not African American Cush. She was not African Zimbabwean Cush. She was Medianite Cush. That's why Jethro, her father, lived in Media. So, whew, so glad we got that taken care of. Now, let's find out whom the descendants of Cush was, because we know that Nimrod, and we I did a video yesterday talking about Nineveh, how he built up Nineveh. It says from there, that land, he went into Syria. That was Nimrod, Sennacherib, when he lost those 185,000 people, it was because he worshiped the same gods as this man. Okay, now. Whew, I'm so glad we got this out of the way. Now, pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. Canaan became father to Sidon, his firstborn. Now, I'm glad you guys understand who he became father to. Let's notice the lands that the Canaanites inhabited. So the boundaries of the Canaanites were from Sidon to Gior, Gior excuse me, near Gaza. As far as Sodom and Gomorrah and Adma and Zeboim near Lacia. I want you all to pay attention. Canaan, curse be Canaan. Well, the descendants of Canaan were Sodom and Gomorrah. You remember those two cities? No, let's not stop there. We're going to go to the 19th chapter because it's very important that we cover the 19th chapter. One, nine. We're going to get to the point in a minute. And then we're going to get to our conversation. It says the two angels arrived in Sodom by evening, and Lot was sitting at the gate of Sodom. Now, you guys don't understand Lot because a lot of people don't understand Lot. The reason why Lot sat at the gate because he was trying to dissuade some of the young men from entering into the city because of the practices that was going on there. That's why Paul and the other Bible writers could speak about how what was going on in Sodom was tormenting his righteous heart. See, when Lot saw them, he got up to meet them and he bowed with his face to the earth. And he said, please, my lords, turn inside, please, into my house, the house of your servant, and stay overnight and have your feet washed. And then when you get up early, you can travel on your way. He was concerned about them because of the way the city was. Why? Because rapes were taking place in that city. Don't worry about it. It's already in scripture. Not adding it up. Rapes of men, ladies and gentlemen, not rapes of women. Of course, that was going on too, but not to the degree of them raping strangers coming into the city. So Lot was sort of like a protector. Then he, at this they said to him, no, <laughs> we will not stay at your house. But overnight in the public square is where we're going to stay. That's right, homie. We're going to kick it in a public square because we don't want to be a burden to you. So we, we got this. Okay, we've stayed in the public squares before. He says, but no, 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 no. Lot says, oh, no, you don't. And he was insistent with them that they went with him to his house. Then he made a feast for them because that was hospitality. And he baked unleavened bread and they ate. Unleavened bread just means it was without yeast. However, before they could lie down and go to sleep, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, from boy to old men, all of them surrounded the house in one mob, and they kept crying out to Lot, saying, Where are the men who have come into you tonight? Bring them out so that we can have sex with them. Ladies and gentlemen, people are saying they're born that way in our society. Ladies and gentlemen, people are not born that way. This is a culture and a habit that is learned. Literally learned. How do we know? Because when the angels came down, 
they introduce this practice to mankind. What? What are you talking about? The angels introduced the practice to mankind. Where you get that from? They don't say nothing about no angels practicing no homosexuality. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the angels couldn't practice homosexuality. Homosexuality is sex between two men. The angels weren't men. They just took on the form of men. No, they introduced the loose conduct with reference to sex to men. When it says they took all of whom they chose, it was including women. How do we know? Shall we go and I show you? All right, let's show you. We can go all the way down here to the very bottom because we started from the top. Now we will work it to the bottom. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the book of Jude. See, the letter of Jude. Jude is the half-brother of Jesus Christ. Okay, he's also the brother of James. Jesus' other half-brother. Okay, so James and Jude were brothers, half-brothers of Jesus. This particular Jude wrote this so that all of you could understand because it was necessary. So that we know that the sons of God were angels because a lot of people think that they were some men living in some other parts of the earth. And the angels who did not keep their original position in heaven, but forsook their own proper dwelling place in heaven. He has re reserved with eternal bonds in this darkness for the judgment of the great day. In the same manner, the same manner as what? As these angels who did not keep their own proper dwelling, but forsook it for that junk that was on the earth. In the same manner, Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities about them, also gave themselves over to gross sexual immorality. Wait, Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them gave themselves over also? See, these angels gave themselves over to sexual immorality. Where are you reading that from? Pay attention. I want you to follow this. The angels did not keep their original position but forsook it. Connected from my cell phone, so give me a second. Undo this, this or disconnect from the cell phone. And then I, I'll finish explaining. Them. We can move on. Gotta just move on. Okay. This particular Bluetooth will connect to the computer and my cell phone at the same time. I got it. I'm keeping it because of that because I can talk on my cell phone while. but forsook it. For what reason? Well, because they gave themselves over the gross sexual immorality and pursued unnatural fleshly desires. You see, it is nothing natural about homosexuality. Nobody is born that way. They introduced this to mankind. How do we know? Watch this. You're going to love these words right here. Whew. These are the most important words of this entire discussion in the same manner, in the same likeness, in the same form, in the same practice, in the same manner, Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them also gave themselves over to gross sexual immorality or homosexuality and pursued unnatural fleshly desires. They are placed before us as a warning example by undergoing the judicial punishment of everlasting fire. Many people think this is hell because it's an everlasting fire. Everlasting fire just amounts to complete destruction. You can't burn anything forever. Go ahead and try to burn a piece of paper forever. When it burns up, it burns up. So it's considered everlasting because you can't bring it back. That's what it means. Does it mean that somebody's being tormented day and night forever and ever? That's not the intent. There are people out there, and look, ladies and gentlemen, I could care less if somebody is gay. I could care less if somebody is bi. I could care less if somebody is sitting up there as queer as they could possibly be, because it ain't up to me. But I want to let you know one thing for a certainty. 
they don't serve Jehovah. You cannot serve Jehovah and be practicing those things, so those are not my friends. They could never be my friends. At one point in time, I hung around people like that. Not no more. Why? Because I don't want to do things demons do. Yeah, these angels that it refers to, these are the ones they refer to as demons. The reason why they're called demons, because they did not keep their original positions as angels. But they gave that up when they came down to the earth to have sex with men and women. Remember, in the same manner, so they had sex with men as well. It wasn't just women. Where do you think Cush and Canaan got the idea from? Ladies and gentlemen, they learned that because their parents told them about the practices before the flood. Where do you think Greek mythology comes from? It comes from those stories that Shem, Ham, and Japheth told their offspring. That's why every society you go to in the world has a story about a great flood. Even the individuals who call themselves uh, evolutionists have a story about the great flood. Yes, 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 I am saying that homosexuality is not a behavior that is anything other than learned. It is not something anybody is born that way. Well, I was born like this. You ignorant, I'm sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, if only people were to understand the roots, but nobody's ever looked at the roots. They looked at it as a scientific thing. Why? Because the Illuminati and Freemason, that's their duty. Their job is to promote that. That's why they promote it in videos. You see, we talked earlier, and I'm finished with this right here. I don't need to show anything else about this. Like I said, we started something about the Freemason and Illuminati. With the Masons and Illuminati, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a separate video after this. So y'all just going to have to just bear with me because I'll do a separate video after this to make this a little bit shorter. In a separate video, we will talk about the other thing. Ladies and gentlemen, with the Freemasons and the Illuminati, their job is to distract you, keep you distracted. That's why when it came to the so-called African-Americans, they allowed them to have those clubs and allowed them to do their little moonshine and whiskey and all that stuff. They allowed them to do the perversive junk. And then they arrested them. The same stuff they still practice today. Ladies and gentlemen, I told you I knew a drug dealer whom the police will give that person a heads up. We are going to be doing a raid. We need you to leave some stuff in the house and we're going to come in and arrest this person and that person. You need to leave somebody there with something so we can arrest them so that we can meet our quota. I witnessed this firsthand, okay? This is our system, the one we live in. They promote this stuff. The judges promote this stuff. They know what's going on. That is the distraction for you guys while you guys are struggling. So do me a favor. Watch the next video because it's going to give you something that nobody else has talked about, I promise you. We've been talking about tax credits, people. We've been talking about giving you a way out and giving you a way to write off your junk. Watch the next video. Now, like I said, because I talked about this, there are going to be some haters, some people who are going to just, woo-wee, they're going to be talking about me, that boy, he he's a hater. He hates gay people. I don't hate anybody. But if you practice something my God says no to and you do it anyway, he's the one that will hate you. Go ahead. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me that the God of the heavens, Jehovah, loves homosexuality. Go ahead. He's the God of love. So tell me that he loves homosexuality. Tell me that he loves fornication. Tell me that he loves adultery. Tell me that he loves idolatry, worshiping of false gods. Go ahead. Tell me that he loves all of these things that the Bible says are wicked. Wait, are you calling gay people wicked? No, I'm calling the practice wicked. Wait, how can you call the practice of homosexuality wicked? Ignorant mother. I'm sorry, I apologize. Because it comes from demons. Oh. Well, it, it does say that they practice the same thing as the demons did way back before Sodom and Gomorrah were even created. Huh. And people are practicing the same thing today, huh? You better believe it. 
doing it without any type of control or constraints. Now they got the same as in Sodom and Gomorrah, the children practicing it. Hearing about these children calling themselves being married, eight, nine years old to other men, other, I mean, other boys. What the flying? <sighs> Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, got one other thing I want to show you. This is Matthew's, the 24th chapter, verse 37. At least I believe it's either 37 or 36. So give me a second. Come on, 24. A little bit more, a little bit more. Slow down. Concerning that day and the hour, nobody knows, neither the angels in the heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Now pay attention, y'all, because y'all don't understand. For just as in the days of Noah were, so the presence of the Son of Man will be. For as they were in those days eating before the flood, I mean before the flood, eating and drinking, and men marrying, and women being given in marriage. Now I want you to pay attention to these words. Men marrying. Who are they marrying? Women? No. Pay attention. And women being given in marriage. If men were marrying women, there would be no need to say women being given in marriage. But we can say men marrying because they were doing the same thing they're doing today. Notice how long it took men to be marrying one another and for it to be considered by the Supreme Court as being legal. Forget what Jehovah says. The Supreme Court says it's legal, so it must be legal. And women being given in marriage, to whom? Well, back then to the angels, to those demons. It says until the day Noah entered into the ark and they took no note. Like some of you guys take notes when you're watching my videos. No, these people didn't take no note. Just like today. I am amazed. I don't watch TV, ladies and gentlemen, but I will watch a couple of TV shows without commercials and all that stuff because I download them. I'm amazed at how many shows out there have a homosexuality built right into the plot. That's the whole premise of the show. Or how I can't watch, I am I love Marvel or DC Comics, but I can't watch a single one of them without their big homosexuality introduced into the show. Amazing. No, I'm not bashing anybody. What I am saying is, what you all are afraid to say. Jehovah says it's wrong. That, that's No, you heard me. You all are afraid to say that. No, you want to say, well, if that's what they want to do, it ain't got nothing to do with what they want. He says it's wrong. I don't care if you are modern and this is, it, it, we, this is a different time period. No, this ain't a different time period. Pay attention how much it ain't different for as they were in those days before the flood. So it ain't different. It's the same time period. It's just now we have the Illuminati and the Freemasons putting it out in music, putting it out on video, putting it out in movies, putting it out on billboards, putting it in magazines. It is more widely spread today than it has ever been. Even before the flood, they didn't have this type of proliferation. Sorry. I meant proliferation, but I didn't mean to say it the way I just did. I meant to say proliferation. But they ain't never had it like this before. Ladies and gentlemen, it is everywhere. You can't turn without seeing it. And no, nobody is saying that individuals get AIDS because they practice homosexuality because individuals who are not homosexuals get AIDS. So not saying that at all. However, what we are saying is that Jehovah says it's wrong. Just that simple. I know, I know, I know you're not a Jehovah's Witness. Nobody cares whether you're a Jehovah's Witness or not. It, it, Jehovah ain't got nothing to do with whether you're a Jehovah's Witness or not. Jehovah has everything to do with he sets the standard. He sets the law. So if Jehovah says it's wrong, it's wrong. And ain't nobody can make it right. But that's what the Illuminati and Freemason have done. They have taken what he says is wrong and they have made it right. They have said, oh, no, it's okay. You can do that. Oh, no, you just can't do that, but you can do that. Yeah, that's okay. But no, no, you can't do that right there. That's, oh, that's, you went way too far with that one. Ladies and gentlemen, Jehovah doesn't operate like that. Jehovah doesn't say you can be a little gay. 
Jehovah doesn't say you can be a little bit promiscuous. Jehovah does not say it's okay. You were born that way. I understand. Jehovah doesn't say that. He never did. He never will. People say, well, wait a minute. There have been some people who say that, you know, people, if they struggle, as long as they keep struggling, yes, as long as you are trying to stop, as long as you're trying to walk away. But a lot of people are not trying. They give in and they succumb. And that's okay because guess what? When they die, they'll understand the reason why. I'm not wishing death on anybody at all. Nope, that's not me. But if people refuse to change, ladies and gentlemen, he is tolerant, but he is not without limits. He says enough, and when he does finally say enough is enough, there's nothing I or anybody else will be able to do to change that. Right now, there are several who are making entreaty for him to allow people the opportunity to change. But quite frankly, people don't want to change. I get to see it every day when I talk to people. They don't want their lives to change. They just want things to get better so that they can go out there and go back to the way they were. They're not trying to change. I know, I know you're saying you're trying to change and that you're not a gay, you're not a homosexual. But what else are you doing that he says no to? Okay, just ask yourself the question. So if you want to change, change. Look, here it has been going on 25 years that I've been celibate. 25 years. So if I can walk away from sex, so can everybody and their grandmama. 25 years, people. And it ain't like I haven't had opportunity. God. As a matter of fact, 